Hi, we're Jordan and Morgan Perryman, and we are Beauty and Beard Photography. We wanted to make this video um, for couples and to help you guys when you're planning during COVID, and I know there's a lot of questions. So we're gonna try and tackle some of those and we've brought on some of our friends who are experts in the wedding industry to uh, hopefully help answer all those for you guys. Hi, so we are here today with our friend Wesley and uh, we're just kinda gonna ask him some questions and talk about it and everything to hopefully give you guys some insight about the state of the industry, what you should be thinking about planning your wedding. So uh, first question is, uh, who are you and what do you do in the industry and all that sure, kind of stuff? Sure, sure. My name is Wesley Cadle. Uh, I own a company called Wesley Cadle Incorporated and we are an event planning and design agency uh, here in Augusta and we work throughout the southeast and up the east coast uh, doing both social as well as um, corporate uh, entertainment uh, any sort of party you can think of will do. Uh, but mainly I think we're here for weddings today, so that's where we'll stick <laughs> stick to, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I, I have done a number of things in the past. I have 30 years of experience doing uh, event planning and event design. Yeah, quite a uh, bit, yeah. <laughs> but yeah it's, it's quite a bit when I think about it. Uh, it I started in Atlanta. I was the uh, the head of an event company, a, a creative director for a company called Event Design Group in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And uh, major things that we did were the Olympics, we for the, the National the Olympic Committee. I'm learning uh, stuff already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we had clients like CNN, Ted Turner, Jane Fonda, um, wow. Travis Tritt. We did Travis Tritt's wedding. That's, that's uh, so we've cool. done some, some fun things. That's uh, fantastic. Lots of, you know, when I was in Atlanta, we uh, had a fairly wonderful clientele. Mm -hmm. So it allowed us to do a lot of different weddings, a lot of different uh, larger scale weddings as well as smaller scale weddings. Uh, so, you know, well seasoned, came back to Augusta, actually from Augusta. Mm -hmm. So came back to Augusta to, um, to open a business in 2001. Okay. and have been here ever since. That's wonderful. Yeah. We've had a lot of couples ask us and I'm sure you guys have heard it. So sure. how do couples even know when they should postpone their wedding? Well, you know, we are working through numbers of different weddings that this question comes up and mm -hmm. it, it, usually it's me that's the happy guy that says, okay, we're gonna make this a wonderful, lovely experience <laughs> and we yeah. move them forward and now, it's become one of those things where I've had to be the sort of not the the grim reaper, but the guy that has to say, OK, we have to look at reality. Right. And yeah, right. so we've been looking at reality a lot lately about where and what to do, um, you know, since uh, early spring or mid spring mm -hmm. uh, in that March time period. We looked at uh, at that point in time and had to bring a number of our weddings just sort of to a halt. And then now we're getting to the point where we're to the um, second postponement stage yeah. and <laughs> yeah. um, and and that's that's where we are a lot with with our weddings is that we're we're to a point where we're the fall weddings are are there and we've had to say to them okay what do we do now mm -hmm. just be aware you know we can't this is something that none of us can help you know we just have to be there right. we have to be ready and we have to have an a plan Mm -hmm. which is where we're going in that happy, <laughs> wonderful wedding that you wanted. And then the B plan of maybe not quite that same wedding. Right. And looking at your wedding and saying, uh, what, what do I see that wedding being? Mm -hmm. um, if COVID-19 affects it and you have to um, social distance, if you have to wear masks, um, if uh, you have a lot of people from out of town that are traveling, mm -hmm. all of these things have to be checklisted off. And, um, and then uh, once you get through that, you're trying to imagine yourself as to what that wedding is gonna be. Mm -hmm. So I, I, look, I talk to my brides and say, imagine the wedding if. And yeah. what that is, yeah. if if we have to wear masks, mm -hmm. if we, your 350 person wedding ends up being a 150 person wedding, and you have a band that's a big giant band that has a lot of energy, and what you have there is yeah. family, 
and you're close friends mm -hmm. and and mainly it's not a big party then it's just sort of your smaller scope because they can't travel or you know there are state state mandates right. then we look at that and decide where whether that's the right thing to do for that bride and a lot of the brides yeah. will make that decision and say well you know i don't want to have that big band mm -hmm. and waste it on a small group that's not going to have that energy and fun that you get that big band oh, for. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, they're looking towards saying, okay, if it's a 50 person mandate, we do it in the backyard. Yeah. Right. We make changes. Right. Um, you know, can we do it on that same day? And then perhaps a lot of them are doing anniversary parties. So mm -hmm. the same weekend or the same day the following year. Uh, they're doing an anniversary celebration party, and that's okay, the yeah. way we're looking at it. I was, um, was going to ask you about that. Yeah. It's like we've seen a lot of couples split it up. They might elope or do like a destination wedding, but they're going to have a part two with right. everyone. Yeah. yeah, and that's what we have been trying to plan is to say, okay, we're doing a small wedding for just the smallest group of just family right. and uh, people that you have to have there, but it's making a decision of that cutoff of where, who do you invite and who do you not invite for that? Right. And so you have to be kind <laughs> of, tough question. you have to really be structured and say, yeah. okay, I'm just going to have just that core people that are really sure. uh, family and very close friends, mm -hmm. even to the point if you have a large bridal party, they're not invited <laughs> to that. That wedding yeah. is just a small wedding. Right, right. And then the big party, you know, is, is in yes. a year. So, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you as couples and uh, just in general, um, there's always this question of how do I even go about postponing my wedding? It's an interesting thing because then we fall into place of how do we postpone? Right. Yeah. How do what do we do to postpone? Mm -hmm. And uh, we automatically go to contracts. We look at what our contracts read for all of our vendors, uh, and um, then we go to work with um, calling the vendors, saying this is what's happening. There's a potential of of a postponement or a postponement of cancellation. Where are you on this? Yeah. What are your policies? Right. Where are you going with this? And everybody's been exceptionally nice as far as vendors are concerned because that's oh, that's yeah. their business. So if they can be nice <laughs> yeah. and they can make those changes, they'll make those adjustments yeah. because it's business. Absolutely. Uh, and you know, we're all just kind of in it together at this point <laughs> yeah. in time. Nobody yeah. wants to you have gotta. to refund and lose out on being a part of that day, you know? It's yeah. like, no, and you, and you don't want to, you know, we're in the business to have a, a, you know, we're in the business to make people happy and, uh, and, and to yeah. do wonderful event experiences. So we don't want to not to have that happen. So right. everybody's right. doing the best they can right. within the realm of what they can do. Sure. Yeah. As it's, you know, it's the, it's that bride and groom special day too. You know, we need to be in it to help them as much as we can to make sure. their day still special, Absolutely. It's, it's especially with everything that's going on. Right. And, and, <laughs> Sorry. I was going to say, in, in our case, you know, it's us and the venue are like the first vendors that they book, but right. us being as hands on as we are, we normally already just fall in love with these couples right. and the day yep. and like the vision. Sure. And it's like, oh, yeah. I don't want to let that go either. <laughs> no. And then how do we, how do we structure it around the small one and then the big one? And how do we, yep. how do we say, okay, well, uh, these vendors can be utilized on, our smaller wedding and yes, then other yes. vendors that would be used on the postponed party for instance uh -huh. and that's happening a lot for us so that postponed mm -hmm. party is where we go to work saying okay um for the bride and groom what dates are potentials mm -hmm. then we take those and we we try to get all of the vendors to align so we take all of our vendors and we find out the dates in which they're available in yep. the time period in which they'd like to do this. Yep. Then we try to work through it and find out where we can get all of our vendors on, on board, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. And um, then we go to work for trying to figure out what that, that second event party is or yeah. Yeah. wedding or, <laughs> uh, you know, some people are doing no weddings and just celebrations. Right. Others are going to wear the dress and do uh, just a, a blessing. <laughs> and so they're actually doing the wedding again, wow. but in the larger form with the blessing since they're already married. Oh, wow. So that's <laughs> how we're accomplishing that on a number of our events now. Wow. Some people are just going to just smaller. Okay, we're, we have some that are still holding on, particularly November, that they're not ready to go. But we are making decisions as to, with our vendors, when the last day that they can say, 
I'm not going to do this party mm -hmm. and for the vendor not to be out and the vendor to for, for us to honor the contracts essentially yeah. right. so whether right. they're verbal after the conversation or whether they're actually written in mm -hmm. we're looking at those contracts and saying okay um, September 1st is your deadline so and that's yeah. the day probably that the invitations are going to go out so you always right. have you're probably going to have a loss if you wait and you'll have to redo invitations or redo but having to be prepared with the smaller group invitation mm -hmm. and being able to decide whether you're going to push off and send the big invitation yeah. and um, and then being prepared at that point in time if you're going to send the big invitation off for your big group being able to have a uh, way to say this party is not happening if something happens yeah. if, if there's a mandate from the the governor or you know there's some reason that you can't have that party mm -hmm. uh, and you know we've been looking at that and 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 wording something deciding whether it goes into the invitation or whether we want the invitation to be just the beautiful right. invitation it was with all the hopes and the moving forward and then <laughs> being able to do a second right a second mailing mm -hmm. and yeah. then uh, and be be sure that your website is really up to date and, and yes. that you're really working through that on the website to where they know where you are and you really do have to look at how many of your guests are um, local and mm -hmm. whether they're out of town, right. whether they're out of out of the country, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether you know, all of those things are going to come into play. We have a client now, which a lot of their uh, attendees are coming from Guam. So, wow. goodness, <laughs> they um, they have decided not to do their wedding, right? Yeah. Because they just feel like, first off, it's it's just the best thing to do because their their family won't be able to be there. Mm -hmm. the, the important people in their lives aren't able to do it, so um, they're going to wait and yeah. do it another time. Yeah. I'm talking about it off camera, you know, we we've been offering live stream, which was something that was almost unheard of, you know, before. Yeah. <laughs> but that's brilliant idea. It's helping a <laughs> lot great. with uh, some of those scenarios where it's just like really important people but it's going to be a while before they're yeah. even okay yeah. with leaving yes like you might have grandparents yeah. that are up north or something that you really would prefer them you prefer them to be there right. but right. they can't just not safe right so now this is really coming. you know yeah. it's a good way for them to feel like that they're a part of that give them a front row seat absolutely but, you, know, you got yeah. it yeah. In, the, in the comfort of their own home but still yeah. being able to be a part of the special day yeah. No. and yeah that's something that like you said if we were to have offered that you know not last year as something that was in a package mm -hmm. we probably would have been be like what like you're crazy. Yeah. You, you're telling me you want said, to live stream what? the wedding. I, I don't want. I don't want that. <laughs> I think no, we've done yeah. that once or twice ever before COVID. Right. Hit. Sure. Right. Now it's like no. almost every wedding. Everybody's like live stream. That's brilliant. Yes, my family can be a part of it now. Yeah, no, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Imagine what social distancing is. Absolutely. With yeah. with your group. If it's yeah. 50, it's different than it's 350, or whether you can even have 350. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, a lot of the venues are 250, 225. You know, we got a call uh, into South Carolina and now, you know, it's 50 outside, 50 inside. Mm. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going to ask that. I was like, yeah. what have you noticed as far as like indoor and outdoor? But yeah. 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 So yeah. it all depends. Huh. You know, uh, we're doing another one at a, a, at a local country club and, you know, they're still at a 225 can do social distance because of the square footage in which we do the wedding and yeah. how we floor okay. plan it. So socially distance is really basically done by the floor plan yeah so gotcha. you know yeah. um, i know you were asking about that earlier the mm -hmm. options of how do you socially how do you socially distance yeah. um the the ceremony or the uh reception or the the service and you know the churches are dictating the services a lot if they're in the yes. service so yes. that's really good they've really thought that through mm -hmm. um and and cocktail talk, cocktails are the worst right. because you just you know people <laughs> want to be happy they want to be apart they want to be close to each other yes. and so mingling. You know, yeah. <laughs> right and some people are um, you know they're completely taking out that cocktail hour yeah mm. they're moving right into a dinner or yeah. they're moving right into to where they're reducing the amount of time mm. in which there's exposure. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, they're doing that. So that's one of the things that we've noticed. Um, and we've pushed towards 
perhaps, uh, you know, and, and food, when we do food, how that's served, how, how the floor plans are set up to where if you do buffets, the buffets are really not hands-on buffets. They're served from behind. Right. And, um, you know, you have an ability of just, they plate it for you and then mm -hmm. they give it to you. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you know, you, you're, you're keeping that, um, that possibility of contamination or, you know, exposure down completely yeah. with yeah. that. So those are the things that we're doing to try to socially distance, try to create that social distance. Then, you know, uh, you do your best to keep your your people. Uh, ask them to be socially distant. Yeah. You know, it's harder in some places than yeah. in others. But yeah. you know, yeah. um, we have to be careful. And again, it's that close your eyes and think of what is that dance floor going to look like with masks on? You know, right. are you going to be able to have a dance floor? Right. You know, those are all questions that you'll have to deal with when mm -hmm. you work with your vendors and your and your event space to know what they're allowing sure. because you are the 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 bride and groom and the family have to expand ex, have to realize that there is um there's um law exposure in this there's exposure for the event planner there's mm -hmm. a there's exposure as far as um being sued for yeah. certain things right. uh for the uh, the event space mm -hmm. uh and for Comfort the caterer <laughs> yeah so i mean we're, we're looking at it from a standpoint of what are we responsible for mm -hmm. and uh, whether we can actually be on site for the event mm -hmm. in some situations if there's a state mandate wow. um, so you know can yeah. you be on site yeah you know <laughs> if, if you're if you're telling me that you want 250 people in a space that i can only have 54 mm -hmm. and um, you know, <laughs> there there is um, there's exposure there for us as far as um, breaking the mandates of sure. the state. Sure. So you have to remember that all of these these vendors want to make you happy, right? But there's all these outside circumstances that are saying, right? You know, uh, you can't do what you really want to do. <laughs> yeah. So you know, the right. bride and groom have to be realistic about that as well. Yeah, yeah. that's great. And I, I'd say even like cutting out the cocktail hour, like we kind of go back to that just a little bit more couples i think are being more willing and thinking about first looks even more mm -hmm. getting mm -hmm. some of that stuff done before yes because then they can go straight to reception yeah. mode yeah. and it, they're not and you think about that be, yeah. from the photography standpoint <laughs> yeah. right and you know i'm the first one to tell you that that's what everybody should do as a first look yeah. right. just for you get the best pictures in all the world Absolutely. Yeah. but also now you can social distance you can be a lot more careful about yeah, right, that right. mask can come into play you can be a lot more careful you know, as a photographer, you can help that along. Right. Yeah. I'm sure. You know, as the event planner, I'm thinking about the guests, but the bride's thinking about the bride, and and we're trying to make yes. her experience right, yeah. and the guest experience. But you know, you have to look at it from the bride standpoint, looking at the guests and saying, okay, what's mm -hmm. a good thing for my mm -hmm. guests now? Because yeah. it's not yes. just um, the fun part or the emotional romantic part. It's you know, there's a health part. Yeah. yeah. It's like some, this weird <laughs> yeah. Break. What is that happy? Break. You know. One thing that we thought we'd never have to worry about at weddings is health. <laughs> Right. Yeah. That was never exactly. on the checklist. I mean, so I can tell a you check. a few stories about help and <laughs> that things say, that you know that. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. But <laughs> but uh, those are things that you know are behind the scenes. <laughs> These are things you have to think about ahead of schedule. Absolutely. Now. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So another question um, that I'm sure you especially get a lot is uh, if we have to postpone, like, what does that look like with the vendors, and um, you know, will we get a refund? What should we expect sure, in that kind of thing? Sure. That is something that we deal with. Well, that's one of the first things that we deal with. Yeah. We actually deal with it before the client comes back in to ask that question because we have to be ready. Yeah. So um, Megan, and I, Megan and I get on the phone and we talk to our vendors. We mm -hmm. find out um, we would call you and say, mm -hmm. how are you? What's going on? You know, we've got something in September. Yeah. You know, we've got this, we've got our, our proposal, we've got our signatures on the page, you know, how, how are you dealing with that? Mm -hmm. So we're asking those questions, um, you know, we're thinking about this cancellation or we're thinking about postponing. Um, how do you feel about that? Because these, this COVID language is brand new. Yeah. Most of these people don't have it in, in their contracts. Right. I'm signing contracts now that have that has COVID language in it, but right. nobody had that COVID language in their contracts. No. So <laughs> it's like nobody ever thought that we'd be dealing with, you know, a, a pandemic. Yeah. It's know, so funny, like most of these couples, they've never been married before. Yeah. So it's yeah. like they already well, were trying to ask their mom what to expect in a lot of cases. And now they're like, 
I got nothing for you anymore. It's hard enough to navigate putting yeah. on a wedding for today. Yeah. Right, right. But then putting on a wedding today and then a pandemic hitting yes. and then going from the pandemic to what do I do with my own wedding during this time? <laughs> it's very hard. So, you know, that's when they um, have said things like, well, we're just so blessed that we've really, we've got you. Because, yeah. you know, uh, we know a lot of people don't have wedding planners, Absolutely. but, you know, th with those that have wedding planners, uh, you know, we're already in that position of what can we do for them? What can we do to make the adjustments? What can mm -hmm. we do to postpone? What can we do to, to change? What are our options? Having a plan B and even plan C, you know, out there ready to go to where they know yep. um, what their options are because they don't know what their options are. Yep. I'm, you know, I'm sure that you're wondering if you're watching this, you're wondering what your mm -hmm. options are. What do I do? How do I go about it? And how much is this going to cost me? Yes. And am I going to lose money? Yeah. So we go into um, first off being very friendly with your your vendors, your people that you're working with, yeah. and um, you know, expressing your concern. How are they doing? You know, and and they realize that it's difficult on you, but it's on difficult on them as well. Right. And trying to figure out how you ease them into getting what you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually they're prepared, but at the same time, they have um, to they have mouths to feed and they have <laughs> businesses to run and insurance to pay and rent yep. to pay and all of that sort of stuff. So they're trying to figure out how they're navigating through this world yeah, uh, as just as much as, as the bride and the groom are in the family. <laughs> yeah. So we look at it from that standpoint and we're good friends and uh, we've worked with our vendors for so long that one of the good things about that is that they're listening to us as much as um as anything else they're saying yeah. what do we need to do for you right yeah. right and they'll do that for the bride and groom as well we're all in it to get to the other side yes and so here we are <laughs> getting to the other side and what does that look like and um and with the vendors um, they're doing the best they can. Mm -hmm. They're uh, they're doing really well with postponements. Um, yeah. You know, if, if they're doing weddings, small weddings, uh, you know, you've got a photographer involved. They need the photographs for that wedding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the photogra the photographer is going to probably end up being at it if they're going to have that small wedding or the large wedding. Right, so that's right. a positive. But then, you know, the size of that package might change or, you know, I don't know. I mean, I might ask you to split the package and say, you know, we've gone for this big package and this is going to be a very small 50 person event. I realize it's a day, but it's a little less of a day. Can you can you give us some sort of discount on next year now whether right. that's an answer you can say yes to but yet you know what ha what's happened is is that event's turned into two events mm -hmm. so you know maybe that's a positive for you i don't know so we're going to work through it and figure out how we can get um the best for our bride and groom right. as the wedding planner we're looking for that and to keep their financial uh, exposure down to a minimum uh, right, and right. try to figure out when they have to have cancellations or if there are cancellations what those policies are mm -hmm. and how lenient your cancellations are and how much um, you know you have to realize that when you sign that contract if it says that 50% is due and it cannot be canceled then you're liable for that 50 percent that's right. the reason why that contract is out there yeah. right. but if there's any way that mm -hmm. you can um, change your date or uh, work through that a lot of them are willing to change that date mm -hmm. if it's a date that they can work to um, yep. so you know cakes venues photographers any of those people that we're working with you know we're we're doing pretty well with making those changes and adjustments right, um, right. but you know a deposit is a deposit and yes. um, it is uh, one of those things where we all live and we all have work that we've done right. to get to that point right so um, you know sometimes you can't you can't get your deposit back right. you know yeah. yep. and uh, but if there's any way to work around it and make make you happy by changing that that uh, a lot of people are really mm -hmm. changing their dates changing around their packages doing what they can to accommodate i yes. think is, is what's happening with yes. us so um you know we've had good and vendors are ready for that question 
Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we're you know, I think they it. are. I mean, I, I don't know how you feel about it, but I mean, yeah. you've right, right. you've had the question more than once. Yeah, we've Absolutely. we've expected it, and I'll say we've been very fortunate that you know we've obviously been able to help clients in the aspect of rescheduling yeah. and not having to do the refund um, yeah. because that is kind of our policy is that you don't get the initial the fifty percent, even though we're allowing. Um, some extra payments and stuff mm -hmm. where to work with people, uh, work with couples, but we, yeah, with that first 50% isn't um, refundable. So we definitely will still want to work with every couple that we have. So we do reschedule. Right. And um, I mean, that's just, you have to think of the vendors that book the furthest out right. and uh, kind of make a checklist, like you said earlier, and go to put, make sure you can right. get some of those you ones do. that book far out yeah. first. Right. So like, as long as we have the date available, we are so happy to be able to right. reschedule, you know? You know, and you, when you reschedule, you, you're bound to spend a little more money somewhere along the way right. because you've printed your invitation or, you know, all of your vendors are not going to align onto that date. Exactly. So unless yep. you're so, so out there with your date that you could just, <laughs> you know, let every vendor line up and say, okay, we're all available and the right. stars are out for that day and they're all aligned then great but you know mm -hmm. sometimes you just can't get everybody so you have to make decisions about that Absolutely. Uh, and that's that's where we're having a hard time but you know the bigger financial outlays like the band are very important mm -hmm. you know if you're mm -hmm. spending nine or ten thousand dollars on a band uh, because it's a you know it's a big band and it's mm -hmm. a big experience mm -hmm. then you're thinking okay that's not money you've you've already put down a percentage yes. okay so what do we do with that and 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 the uh, producers and the the managers are saying things like well um, when do you want to have a party mm -hmm. you know yeah. so in essence the parents are even being able to say okay even if we're doing this small 50 person party mm -hmm. and we can send you a one person or a two person entertainment package then maybe you take that band and let's find a day in next december and you give a christmas party yeah. so you know yeah. they're trying to figure out how they it's not like they want to give you the, the band wants to perform for you yeah you know so yes. they're going to do their best whether it's a party in the future for your parents or right. whether it's your anniversary party or whatever it may be right. they're willing to do that so yeah, you absolutely. know you have to think creatively about where that goes yes yes yeah. so with everything that you know COVID-19 uh, has made wedding wedding season and weddings just in general kind of change a lot so you have a lot of creativity and and with it being spread out what do you kind of so yeah with that or we see that a lot we're yeah. seeing that you know everybody's having to rethink what that wedding's about and we've talked about that a lot but part of this is um you know now it's more personal mm -hmm. i think we have to look at it from you know uh, sure you'd like to have 350 people at that wedding yeah um but you know at this point in time you can't <laughs> right you know, it's illegal you know, or or if it's not illegal it's just not right yeah. you know because right. you know of, of you know you just don't want to make anybody sick yep. the last thing you want to do is to have a rem uh, somebody remember oh there were 30 people that got COVID at that wedding it's yeah. awful. Or even just having yeah, it is like awful. You're looking over your shoulder the right. entire being, right. being right. so right. paranoid during a happy day. Like, so how are you creative with that? Yeah. With right. it with it now and saying, okay, I'm rethinking my wedding. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not what I want it to be, and I want to cry about that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I still want to get married. It's important to get married. Yes. On this date, in this year for me. So right. what does that look like to me? Mm -hmm. You know, how do I? How do I change that? You know, how do I? How do I re refresh the whole idea of what this wedding is since, you know, my my original thought and what I've been working so hard and fast on for the last e few months, mm -hmm. um, what does it need to be now? So kind of, you kind of have to put the stop button down and then start it again and say, yeah. all right, what what is, um, what does this new wedding look like you yeah. know, for me? <laughs> you know, it's different, it's smaller. Yeah. It's going to have to be more personal. It may have to just be wedding. It may just be have family and my two favorite friends. And, you right. know, that's it, you know. Right. So what do you do? Do you do that as a destination wedding in Savannah or in mm -hmm. St. Lucia? Or do you, you know, do you go up on the top of a mountain and do it? Or yeah. do you do it on a beach? Like you know. That. <laughs> make, top of a mountain. <laughs> yeah, make, make changes in, in the way you're thinking about how that 
days memorable to you, I think. Yes. You know, I think it's not just about the health and the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Now, since I can't have my 350 with the big band, with the big dance floor and right. all of that, right. what makes my day distinctive and personal and about me and my partner mm -hmm and mm -hmm. moving forward in life and those pictures that mm -hmm. we're looking for yeah. and those memories that we're looking for, yeah. where and what and how do we do that? So I think that's where, where you go with it is, is, is you get more creative, you start thinking, right. you take those, you dream a little more because you've been dreaming yeah. a long time and now you've been into, you're out of dream mode into production mode. Yes. You know, as sure. a bride, yes. you're into, okay, getting it done and Absolutely. getting all the stuff done, the checks written and the dates done and the times mm -hmm. done and all of that. And now you have to stop and say, okay, stop. Yeah. Now, restart this. <laughs> What's my new dream? Right. Yeah. And right. so you start your new dream, mm -hmm. you know, and make that dream whatever you want it to be that, that's within your budget. And, you know, again, sure, you know, we talked about this earlier, you could save money, mm -hmm. you know, because you have less people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you could take the same money that you're going to spend 350 people and, you know, you could go to Thailand with your, your family, you know, and yeah. have the most memorable yeah. experience on on that amount of money, you know, <laughs> yeah. or you could, you know, go to Appling mm -hmm. and, you know, go to the lake and go out on a, you know, a, a pontoon boat and get married, yeah. whatever works for you, Little you know, private islands they have out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, so rethink, yeah. you know, you know, to, uh, sort of stop. That's what I said. Just put a full stop on the mm -hmm. last wedding and say, okay, what does this new wedding look like for me? And what can right. I do to produce the new experience? Right. And the new, yeah. yeah. I and think, the new I think the brides are really kind of getting a special special way to do do it now i mean you're you're really getting time to actually stop and take a breath yeah. you know because it's like you said you know you get you get so wound up in in having to do everything write the checks and right. you almost don't i think a lot of brides get so caught up in it they almost don't even really enjoy the experience yeah. of it you know and, and this i really think in, in a weird way a in a weird way this has yeah. almost um caused brides yeah. to be able to enjoy right you know, our, full, our our idea about this is to, you know, when we get involved and when we're pulled onto the scene, we make it as easy and as comfortable. Yes. And, you know, we're the ones that they turn around and say, what's next? Mm -hmm. yeah. There are lots of brides that don't have that that luxury of, you know, <laughs> well, what's what's next? Right, you know, right. you know, uh, so now if they're in that high pressure time period, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it is a way to say, OK, you know, here we are. COVID-19 is here. I, you know, I do have to do a full stop. Mm -hmm. I've got to stop. I've got to change. I've got to make decisions. Yeah. And, you know, it's okay to make totally different decisions. Yes, absolutely. And, um, you get real and, yeah, 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 you can. I think oh, you can. Yeah. I think you're I right. Think even I mean, when it comes down to it, if you have this big, big wedding in it, and sometimes it could even be too too much, like it becomes to, it's a place where it's no longer even like really what you had planned for, you know? Sometimes that happens. Sometimes that happens. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, if, if you had a dream of going and get in, getting lost in the woods, you know, with your, with just, you know, your, your, uh, maid of honor and your best man and you your know? dog and your dog <laughs> yes this you could do this now no, you know you, you, wanna, <laughs> you can take a helicopter or an airplane to get somewhere real and, private yes yeah and real specific I to you i think that this <laughs> pandemic has made it's made a change in in what people think are important what, exactly what important. oh yeah. that's so that's so good and and you know it, you know sure it's 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 a wonderful experience and it's just as important with 350 people yes. as it is 50. yes yeah. but in the end you're going to be yeah. yeah, and and we yes. lose sight of we lose sight of the wedding part and the we ceremony do. and the fact that this is a, a sacrament mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's all about the party and um, you know the bride has to look at it from the standpoint that you know there are parents out there that think the sacrament is more important than the party you know right. and so right. having both of those things and having it in a small romantic beautiful wonderful yes. uh small setting with yeah. a, you know a smaller frame and, mm -hmm. a, and a smaller picture instead of a grander scale um can be just equally as wonderful as oh absolutely i mean sure. sometimes even but it's hard to think that more. you know when you've been thinking about this big wedding for so long you can't think that <laughs> right so right you do have to say okay stop mm -hmm. yeah yep so in your own business and personal life uh yeah this is the fun question. What have you seen um, as far as the effect of COVID nineteen? Yeah, that's the that's the 
question and impact that everybody's experienced in, in this entire industry, whether you're, you know, a rental chair, rental China in part, or yeah. whether you're um, a photographer, or you're a baker, or you're a florist, or an event planner, or, you know, you have to look at it even bigger because this, this industry is an event industry and it's not just about wedding, it's about, um, you know, it's about businesses. Mm -hmm. It's about, um, you know, uh, the impact. You know, my impact is, is not just wedding, it's, it's Mercedes-Benz and IBM and all those corporate people that I work with yeah. that are losing money and losing business and, you know, it's impacting what they do to entertain. Sure. So, you know, essentially what it's done is it's flattened or negated most of this industry for the last few months. Yeah. yeah. So you know the graph has gone from you know a, a, you know a wonderful extreme high for the event industry, yeah. which is you know a, a, it's an industry that's it is uh, not an absolute necessity. You mm -hmm. know, and we see that it's not a necessity. It is a it's just a <laughs> you know it is what it is. It, right. It's it's yeah. just fluff. You yeah. know, in a lot of ways, um, it's happiness, it's wonderment, it's all of those yes. things. Yes. But there are degrees of that, and at this point in time, you know, that graph has come way below what we would call the line. Yeah. And right. you know, financially, it's um, it's put everything on hold, or stopped it, postponed it, changed it. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're doing anything, you're you're using up your deposits on your smaller events. You're not making any money. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's one of the things that w you have to realize is that the event business, you know, my uh, my businesses are beyond the event business. I do a lot of interior design, so I have enough. But there are people that don't have anything else on that other end, right? And they're wondering whether they're going to be here in September as as a vendor, yeah. yes, because yeah, they really. don't have the money and they have too much overhead. Absolutely. You know, yeah. Yeah, we've got some friends with studios that are just like refund after refund because yeah. they're not available. Yeah. And it's just, it, it's heartbreaking to see. And like I said, we've been very fortunate to not have to go through that, you know, like knock on wood and all that. But <laughs> it's hard being on this side of event business where, you know, we're our customer, we're customer driven and there is no customer at this point. Right. Right. Yeah. Because like you there said, it's, no, it's, we didn't realize how we can't market it. Yeah. <laughs> because there's nothing to market to. Right. There's a future. Yeah. So that's what we look towards now is right. what are we doing to build up when we, um, when this COVID pandemic is over, mm -hmm. you know, we can do what we can to band aid through the pandemic right. yeah, and to make the smaller weddings happen and make people happy. But mm -hmm. we've got to start looking at what happens after the pandemic right. And, right. and trying to hold fast to what you have. Um, trying to cut your costs, trying to do everything that you can to stay, <laughs> stay okay, mm -hmm. stay above the line, and to um, be uh, be on the map after the pandemic. So you yes. know we're you know the, the I think the brides and the grooms and they realize that, but I don't think they understand that you know if they're in a different business, they have that paycheck coming in. Right. Yeah. And right. From our standpoint, this is our paycheck. Yeah. Right. And, and it's uh, very season driven sometimes. Yeah, yes. season driven. And yes. and when you don't have a season, yeah, you when don't have four this, seasons. This is about you know? to be the wedding season yeah. and it's still You have no on. season. Yeah. So. Yeah. And yeah, and we're still very yeah, so much into do? the pandemic. So yeah, yeah what, what do we yeah. do? Especially when this is our living, the way that we make our income, we don't have another right. job to bring money in. Like right. this is our living. So today we are sitting here with Brittany Nelson and she's just gonna kind of tell you about everything that she does. So. Take it away. I feel like I do lots of things, but my actual studio is Britt Nelson Makeup Artistry, and I do personal styling and creative directing, and you can see some of my work like in the Mercedes commercial that's running right now, or there's a lot of like print things that you'll see. I work with a lot of designers that will have me do catalogs for them and things like that, and I do a lot of beauty because there's a lot of weddings in our area. We're in the South, and people yeah. love a beautiful wedding, and so I work with a lot of um, regular like moms and and brides and things like that learning how to take care of their themselves or do events or things like that that's cool i also heard that you might have worked with some marvel <laughs> so i worked with so i work with sean richards so i'm her brand ambassador for this like half of the united states and sean richards london is the makeup artist that does like Black Panther and the Marvel movies and stuff. And she yeah. has her own line of foundation that does not budge. I mean, it, her makeup 
stays until Christ comes again. <laughs> it's amazing. That's fantastic. And that should be like her tagline. It really <laughs> should. I'm like, you don't, you can have a wedding until, in, until, on the until, beach in the middle of summer and you're going to look perfect because this of this. Until the rapture happens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so I went to some classes with her and I ended up selling like a ton of her products at the end and she was like, do you want to come work for me? And I was like, yes, I would do really good at selling because I use a ton of it in my studio and I think it's wonderful. So she does a lot more film as to where I'm still raising kids and I don't want to be on set. I stick more with beauty, but together, I mean like products line, it works out really well for both of us. It's really cool. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so how is uh, COVID-19, I mean, all that's going on. How is that kind of, from your expertise, how have you seen that affect the beauty side of weddings in the industry and everything right now and your business as a- It like person. totally freaked everybody out, right? Yeah. Because I'm breathing in your eyeball. Like yeah. I'm so close to your body yeah. <laughs> that social distancing is impossible in my industry. Yeah. So we had, of course, everybody shut down for a couple months. Mm -hmm. We rescheduled all of our all of our events and weddings and all of that. And I tried to be really communicative with all of my brides and make sure that everybody knew like we're just rescheduling, this is still happening and I'm excited to be involved. And when I now I'm slowly starting to take clients again, I felt like I was always really on the ball with sanitation, like you could eat off the floor of my studio. <laughs> but now I want them to visibly see like the alcohol yeah. being used and that like I can't wear gloves and do what I do, but like I'm masked and shield and they come in with, you know, like our, their clean face and I make sure that we're very clear that everything's very, very sanitized. Mm -hmm. And there's only one person in my studio at a time, which sometimes can kind of be funky with the, like a bridal party. Yeah. So I kind of have people, you know, every 45 minutes, like somebody else will come in. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's gonna be similar to like how our great grandparents were with like World War II. They had these weddings that didn't look like they thought they were supposed to, yep. but they have killer dinner party stories forever. Yeah. <laughs> because they had a wedding like nobody else had. Like we have drive through weddings, which sounds terrible, but in 20 years, you're gonna be like, look what we did. Yes. You know, yeah. we had to do it this way. And it was something that nobody else will have. Yes. And you still got to be a new family. In so it way, works. Yes, in a way, absolutely. it might like pave the way for some like future trends or like little absolutely. things that attach later. It's, yeah. it's, and you really pay attention, to, pay attention, excuse me, like what's, why you're sentimental about something. Mm -hmm. Why something matters that you want to include it in whatever you're trying to do because of its meaning to you. And yeah. fortunately for me, everybody wants to look beautiful on their wedding day. <laughs> so I'm good. Like, well, I'm for sure going to be there, but I just make sure that I'm right on top of hygiene, very respectful of people's spacing yeah. and very un like accommodating to having everything get changed around. Like people are sad about that. And so yeah. I try and be really kind about it because we're all just doing our best. So um, what are, you know, just in this day and age, what are some practices that you think couples should be looking for um, when searching for like uh, hair and makeup or stylists and different things like that? Since we were just talking about everything being online, yeah. I think it's super important to do your homework and check your hair, makeup people's, their portfolio, like you normally would, but also pay attention to the background, mm -hmm. see how messy their stations are, see if their fingernails are clean, mm -hmm. see if they've got um, like, you know, like an overflowing trash can or something like that, because that kind of shows you their, like how they work in the world and their in their space. Yeah. And so, like I had said earlier, like we're always super clean, like we're already trying to clean brushes and all that, but like I bring an average of 400 brushes with me now to any wedding wow. because I don't have time to clean them to the level, like it's not getting, a little bit of makeup and bacteria out. It's like completely thorough cleaning everything. So instead of having a quick spray clean, mm -hmm. it's like they're dunked in solution. <laughs> As to where that's not reasonable for, right. for weddings generally speaking. I mean, you yeah. clean your brushes, but it's not like a deep clean. Yeah. So now I'm making sure that I bring every brush under the sun with me. They all get discarded, um, you know, into this like go bag. And I bring my own little, like, little trash can. I make sure that everything is super clean around me. And so when somebody's looking for somebody to be part of their you know, glam squad, yeah. make sure that like their hair's tied back when they're working on you and that they are super up to hygiene within themselves and that they're geared up. Like they have masks for people that aren't there and they've already social distanced right. things. Like I'm not meeting people in person for consults. We do yeah. a FaceTime. Yeah. And then I also ask them, like, what are their, who are they around? I'm going to be a little bit more cautious if you work in a hospital. Yes. As opposed to me, Fair who enough. works yeah. very one-on-one -on -one and very limited interaction right. a couple times a week. And then it's just me at home with my family. Yeah. So for somebody that has so much more exposure, we also need to make sure that we're taking care of things on our end as well. So yeah. 
fresh masks, fresh shields, right. tons of sanitation with you that you're never going to run out of. <laughs> like a Boy Scout, bring it in, take it out. You know, I'm taking my little trash bag out with me <laughs> because I don't want to ever have any, you know, leave no trace except a hot face. <gasps> I just made that up. I That's like genius. That. I like Great. That. There you go. I'm going to coin that. Perfect. Anyway, so that way you can kind of see how somebody lives in the world normally before yeah. and sees how much they're going to level it up hiring you for now because we should be a heightened we're trying to protect each other and also yeah. like celebrate yes. your great your great exciting thing that's coming up that's for sure. so good i love that those are great tips good <laughs> yeah. okay and i love kind of what you you said that was another thing that we didn't even mention like in the question before but like the amount of zoom meetings yes <laughs> oh my gosh so many zoom meetings. So many zoom, meetings. zoom has gotten that business has exploded yes. since yes. like february probably mm -hmm. and i try and keep it short and sweet like i want like a 15 minute call where they're telling me all about what they're excited about for their, you know, their wedding. And then I'll send a questionnaire about skin type and, you know, what you want it to look like. And yep. please be realistic. You know, if you look like me, don't send me a picture of Beyonce that yeah. you want to look like at your wedding because it's not going to look the same and then you're disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of have questionnaires in there that they can go through. But the face to face is really like I'm looking at face shape and all of that. Right. But I'm hearing who they are yeah. so that I can mirror that with their makeup. And that's, I love we're that. kind of the same way too. We even ask some questions to them as like couples mm -hmm. to kind yes. of get to know them. And it's like, yeah. what are we kind of looking for in their personality? Like or, their spirit. Yeah. Right. Like, yes. Like, we're trying to represent that. Like, yeah, is this going to exactly. be a quirky couple that we're just going to have a blast? And that's kind of our ideal client, so to speak, is like, you know, someone that we're just going to want to be friends with because mm -hmm. honestly, most of our couples we're friends with now. Right. That's awesome. Right. Same. We yeah. <laughs> we, we carry friendships well past the wedding day yeah. and yeah. it's so much fun. Like, we, you know, we, we friend you on Facebook and we follow Same. you and see like we have oh, some of our couples now from like when we first started, they're having families and all And that. then you get to, yes, it carries yes, through. It carries through. I know a lot of makeup yeah. artists are like, oh, I hate prom season. <laughs> and I love it because prom girls let you do crazy stuff. Right, like I'm not yes. gonna do like a glitter cut crease on a normal bride. Right, right. Please don't ask me to do that. I will, but unless you, you are real it. extra, that yeah. is not gonna work for you. Right. Yeah. Uh, but the prom chick wants, you know, emerald green in right. a cut crease, and I'm like, yeah, right. let's do some fun yeah, stuff. And crazy. then they call you when they get engaged and married and yeah, have things. And so I'm like, so true. I love the teenagers. They're fun. They're exciting. Yeah. We get to do fun stuff, and they're your client base forever. Yeah. So I think it's super fun. I think. Anybody, I don't think I've ever not had a good time. If somebody doesn't like it, we wash it off and right. do something else. Right. Like, it works out really exactly. good. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And this is such a fun industry, really. Yes. I mean, yeah, like you said, we're working with, you know, people on the happiest days of their lives. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, we get to sit there and experience just so much joy and like have fun with them. And, you know, like, yeah, we, we're doing all these questionnaires before. So we already kind of know them and yes. like, get to know their personalities and all. And yeah, it's, it's just such a fun thing, like being a part of somebody's like best day of their life it's, it's true it's so different than i think really uh, any other job that's out there is like oh no <laughs> yes like my husband's a nuclear engineer and so he's like the you know the driest work ever yeah. <laughs> yes. and i come home from work different. and i did this and i'm super jazzed out and i'm super excited <laughs> yeah. and it was awesome and they kind of yeah. make fun of me at weddings because i show up like the fairy godmother like i bring a cooler <laughs> with like snacks because oh, nobody so all the bridesmaids have been drinking mimosa since right. 9 a.m yeah. right so by 2 30 yep. they have headaches <laughs> So I'm like, here's a granola bar right, yeah. and here's a toothbrush. And like people so will say smart. like, you're kind of expensive. And I'm like, yeah, but what you get, like the experience yes. with me, you're exactly. going to look amazing, but I'm also going to make sure you like brush yep. your teeth and the boutonniere is right. And like, yep. we're walking you out the door where you look perfect and it's not yeah. going to be overlooked. Like yeah. I got you. And that's, you know, that's kind of a thing with on our side too. It's like, you can get bright and airy photos, but what makes you different is like, you're going to feel like we're an extension of your bridal yeah. party and like yes. we're going to be fun and make you comfortable on a day that could very easily turn into one of the most stressful days, yes. Yes. but it should be the happiest day of your like life. Like happy you know? stress is good, Yeah. but panic stress right. or whatever is like not good. Like oh, we're yeah. trying to diffuse that and make people feel yeah. good. And I give a lot of my brides, I tell them like, if you want, I can kind of kick everybody out nicely and say, <laughs> oh, this yeah. is her 45 minutes of mm -hmm. chill. So maid of honor has your phone. Yes please unless it's an emergency just let her be and i kind of do that before say i can do this or i cannot like you give me the signal mm -hmm. and most of the time they take me up on it and it's the only time they have quiet the whole day oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's great yeah and maybe i'm just kind of a bossy chick that i can do that but i try to be nice about it but Girl. my purse i'm like yeah you know you guys go change let her have her quiet time or i'll yeah. like say it that we you know we're wanting her yeah. to kind of center herself and that yes. ended up being 
people write about it like in reviews on like Google and Facebook and stuff. And I'm like, the whole day, that's what you're writing a review about? Like so your makeup funny. didn't come off for 15 hours, but yeah. I'm super glad that was like a super important thing to you. And so now I do it with every bridal party. I'm yeah. like, yeah. just yeah. so you know, if she's feeling overstressed, I'm going to ask you all mm -hmm. to kind of chill a little bit or just have some like quiet downtime. Yeah. Yeah. And the last yeah. wedding I did, they went upstairs at the Loft Enterprise Mill and they sang hymns. Like it was a Sunday wedding and the oh, girls cool. all met at like a Christian university. And while I Chills. worked on the, yeah, while I worked on the bride, they were up there singing songs that they had done in choir or whatever. Aww. And I was just like, this is the best Sunday wedding I've ever wow. been to ever. Like they're singing yeah. hymns before you walk down the aisle. Yeah, and it was yeah. very like That's peaceful beautiful. and serene. And I always bring like music mm -hmm. and try and play off of the mood for the girl, you know, yeah. do you want Billie Eilish or do you want like folk music? Like, where are you at? <laughs> it's great. Cause you want the, in, like the yeah. entire environment to just be love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we totally feel that because I, I kind of end up being that same person. Like, yes. Yes, there's so many times where the, you know, like mother of the bride, you know, doesn't quite understand that, you know, they're maybe adding a little too much pressure or yes. yeah, like bridesmaids, you know, they're a little too rowdy because yeah, mimosas are flowing. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, sometimes you kind of have to be that like, you know, hey, I'm here to be someone that's going to create a calming environment for you. Yeah. So if it's getting too much, please let me know. And I will happily just as nicely as I can tell them that they need to, need to step out yeah, for a little bit or just, you know, take it down a couple notches. Yeah. <laughs> have know? a little bit more like peaceful yeah. time. Yes, because it's going to get crazy in a minute. You know, yes. you have all this crazy time when it comes to reception time. Right yes. now is a good time to reflect on the few, you know, like last moments that you have as an unmarried woman. Yes. And really kind of just really just soak that up and enjoy that with your girls. Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah, if you if you like later look back at it, you think, man, I wish that I had just had a little more time to just really soak up those moments. For sure. It's mm -hmm. good to kind of remind them in that moment, like, hey, don't let this pass you, you know. Yes. Enjoy it, it. You don't want it to be a blur. And it right. kind of is going to be anyway. Like yeah, it just that's is. It really is. Why we're there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. If you're going to document everything, so yeah. you can go back and be like, oh, yeah, I love, yeah. I did love this. Yes. Um, so I try, like, what I, you can control what you can control. Mm -hmm. So when I'm in the room, I want people to feel good. Like, I want, like, even just like my normal self, unless you're a teenager at my house that has not done their chores, then I don't care what you feel like. <laughs> I don't care about your opinion about the dishes. Yeah. But at work, especially, like, you're not just hiring a lady to slap makeup on you. Right. Yeah, for sure. You're hiring right. me to make you look phenomenal. Right. And feel like the most glorious bride that has ever walked down the aisle in yep, the history yep. of the universe. Yep. And that comes with, with everything. Mm -hmm. And it's, I feel very like honored and I cry a lot of times. It's kind of embarrassing that I, <laughs> and I'll text my husband. I'm like, they're doing their vows and I just, I love you so much. And he was like, I'm mowing the yard, but thank you, you know? <laughs> oh my gosh. I, no, I feel that because there are times when I, I've literally looked at him during, you know, the first dance yes. and, I, and I look at him, I'm like, can we just put our cameras down for a second and just dance? <laughs> Cause you're my person. Yeah. Yes. yes. And I love it. And, and it's then, so yeah. sweet. And there's been times like, you know, uh, like a pastor will be praying over them and stuff mm -hmm. as a couple. There's, there's yeah. actually, um, one wedding we did where the pastor prayed over all the married couples. Yes. Oh, like that's he did a, awesome. He did a separate one and like, we just got to like hug each other yeah. and like take it in. We're like, yeah, it's like, cause like I during prayers, that. normally we don't really take photos a whole lot, you know, like we might snap it's more. It's sacred. So you kind of, yeah. 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 Ask for it and say, you want a couple pictures of, you know, being prayed over or something. We'll absolutely do that. But like normally, yeah, that's a special moment. Prayer is, you know, it's meant to just kind of, you know, sit and be with the Lord. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So during that moment, like when they said, you know, we're inviting all of the married couples to be part of this, we were like, Oh, wow. <laughs> that's neat. Yeah. Was thank really, you. Yeah, was like, I would love to. Yeah. Yes. That's it's awesome. So cool. <laughs> I have not ever seen that before. I think I would cry my face off. Oh yeah. Probably. It was emotional. It really was. Yes. We both were just kind of sitting there, like you said, holding on to each other. Like this is so sweet. Yeah. yeah. I wear waterproof makeup to every <laughs> wedding I go to every yeah, single time. To, even sure. if I just yeah. see like the flower girls walk in, I'll get misty. <laughs> right. And I don't even think I'm a huge crier, but I, I believe in marriage a lot. And even like, I feel like I did yeah. a makeup lesson to a mom. She just had triplets and she was, she's had triplets. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like she's not real filling herself. <laughs> right. <laughs> and when yes. she looked in the mirror, was well, she, you know, when I teach a lesson, they're doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. Like if they, if I tell them all what to do and they can't do it on a Tuesday morning at 7 a.m., you wasted all your money with me. You've got to know how to do it yourself. Yeah. So I taught her a couple of tricks that would make it a little bit faster to get the look she wanted because she likes like cat eye like I have today. And, <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's good. You're going to have to be still. Yeah. And we're going to have to do this a little bit. And she got it. And you could see that like the like light, like oh. scoop back in her body a little yeah. bit because she's giving it all away to her kids, which is great. Yeah. yeah. But you need your like own core self to yes. feel like I am good as an independent woman by myself. Yes. Yeah. And I find a lot of joy 
and going into people's spaces or having them come just teaching classes or girls nights or things like that because yeah. I think we need more women and I don't at the end of the day like besides your wedding day I think you should look like a rock star but like I don't really care what you look like normally like yeah. I care about how you live in the world right, are you happy right. and fulfilled and all of that yeah. Yeah. and so that's why I like doing classes so much because I'm like put your makeup on and go serve the Lord yeah. <laughs> and don't think about your makeup again like yeah. it's buy the good stuff that's not going to move and go do your life yeah and it's really fun like it's fun to see people in all the stages that's amazing of life it's I love sweet. that yeah so sweet all right, so it's uh, another day, and we're in another part of the building, uh, obviously, in you know, different clothes. But uh, we wanted to have our friend and pastor uh, on and just to kind of bring some encouraging things and what he's seen uh, during this interesting time in our, our world. So uh, just go ahead and introduce yourself, kind of talk about what you do. And oh, absolutely. So I'm Jason Mitchum, pastor of Revivify Church, and uh, I pastor speak a lot on Sundays and obviously do a lot of weddings mm -hmm. uh, throughout any given year. Although COVID-19 has brought a slowdown uh, <laughs> to the marriage industry, if you will, <laughs> if I can say such a thing. Um, a lot of challenges um, that we've never had to face before. And um, I'm sure many, many companies like yourself are experiencing these changes. And so uh, from a pastor's perspective, um, I have not actually had to do a wedding yet during the season of COVID-19. Uh, however, I am doing a couple in November, which yeah. I'm sure November we're still going to be very much uh, maybe hopefully on the tail end of this thing. Uh, but still, um, you know, it's, it's it presents some challenges. So one one of which is, you know, the I was actually in a counseling session this morning, premarital counseling session, oh, yeah. and they asked the question, do we require mask? That's the big one, right? Yeah. And so when you think of mask, as far as a wedding goes, that's kind of an awkward scenario, or at least in my mind, you're like, man, everybody's masked up. How, you know, this is just not going to be cool. And, you know, because it's supposed to be a glorious day. It's a beautiful day and it's, you know, white and bright with colors and flowers, whatever. And everybody's in their, their best dressed scenarios and then they've got this ugly mask on you know and so i've thought about that i was like man this is going to be crazy but thankfully so far i've not had to do any during this time but in november we will and so again she asked you know do we require masks i said listen that's entirely up to you mm -hmm. now of course there's state and county municipalities that some are requiring them you know and so everybody's going to be in a different scenario and you just kind of got to roll with it yeah. uh now I seriously doubt that any particular municipality is going to come in and shut down your wedding because you don't have a mask on. Yeah. However, if you know you can make this a fun time and you can do some really neat things with this mask thing, and, and just think about it: what if at every table uh, or every chair that someone sits in, there's a mask and it has the the name of the bride and groom on it with their yeah. date? Aww. You know, you can uh, do that as like your. Uh what do you call it? Your favors? Yeah, or yeah, something? favors, exactly. So, I mean, that's kind of cool. Now, I know it's a little added extra expense, but you're going to do it anyway. You're going to yeah. put your name and stuff on napkins and cups. And, and koozies. And, and yeah, <laughs> all that stuff, right? Whatever. So, totally why good. not do something funny with a mask, you know? Yeah. There's so many different things that you can do that won't take away from... Yeah the splendor of it all you know sure. and, and still make it fun and so tiny you know, wedding I, colors even yeah exactly <laughs> so you know don't stress about it don't worry about it because listen the wedding day is stressful enough for it to all come together but here's the fact of the matter throughout your marriage starting from day one when you say i do you're going to have crises like this come up in your life and it's all about learning to to manage those crises mm -hmm get over them and move forward and not let it stop you from living you know and so we shouldn't let COVID-19 stop us from living uh, even in wedding scenarios I know it, the, the obviously the virus is very real right it's out there it's happening people are dying people are passing people are getting very very sick from it however you know from this standpoint you can still do it in a safe manner, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and, you know, yes, your wedding may not have thousands of people there because of the obvious risk, but there's nothing wrong with having a few hundred of your closest family and friends and not being afraid of it. And again, you can use the mask, but the point being is that you're going to discover challenges along the way in your marriage and you'll get past them just like we'll get past COVID-19. Yeah. So don't stress about it. Don't worry about it because listen, the day honestly is not about the ceremony. It's about the two people coming together and family and friends watching that happen. Yeah. yeah. And so make the best of a really bad situation. And let's just move forward and just have a good time. Enjoy it. And just, just think about it. Your marriage will be the most unique ever 
it, you did it during a pandemic. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you brought to, you were brought together during a pandemic. So yeah. I don't know. That's just kind of the way I look at it. And I'm just trying to calm the fears of every bride and groom that I come in contact with. You know, For especially sure. like the two I'm doing in November. Hey guys, don't worry about it. If you want mask, have them. If you don't, don't. It's cool. Maybe make favors out of them again. You know, just that whole thing. So I think it's going to be a unique season. I think people are going to look back on this year and go, "Wow, that was cool." You know, we got through it. It was it was a hard time, but we got through it. Yeah, so. for sure. Yeah, yeah. We just we really wanted to have him on because I mean he's been a huge blessing in our lives, and you know what better way to kind of give back to you you guys out there. Um, we believe in the covenant of marriage Absolutely. so much, and I mean that's a huge part of why we do what we do and why we love what we do. So we just we really wanted to have him on to you know speak a word of encouragement to you guys uh, during this interesting time yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, sure just to let you know that you'll get married and you'll get to spend your life with your best friend and it'll be okay. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. Thank you guys for watching and we, uh, we hope that this helps answer your questions. It's a very uncertain time right now, but ultimately you're going to have a beautiful wedding day and we're happy to help however we can.